I grew up in a black family, in a black neighborhood, in a black country. I've traveled to other black cities and black countries all over the black continent. And in all of that time, I've yet to find a place where black people like cats. One of the biggest reasons for that, as we know in South Africa, is that only witches have cats, and all cats are witches. There was a famous incident during an Orlando Pirates soccer match a few years ago. A cat got into the stadium and ran through the crowd and out onto the pitch in the middle of the game. A security guard, seeing the cat, did what any sensible black person would do. He caught the cat, live on TV, he beat it to death with a sandbuck, a hard leather whip. It was front page news all over the country. White people went ballistic. The security guard was arrested and put on trial and found guilty of animal abuse. He had to pay some enormous fine to avoid spending several months in jail. What was ironic to me was that white people had spent years seeing videos of black people being beaten to death by other white people, but this one video of a black man killing a cat, that's what sent them over the edge. Black people were just confused. They didn't see any problem with what the man did. They were like, obviously that cat was a witch. How else would a cat know how to get onto the soccer pitch? Somebody sent it to jinx one of the teams. That man had to kill the cat. He was protecting the players. In South Africa, black people have dogs. Chapter 7, Foofy. Almost every black family I knew had a dog. No matter how poor you were, you had a dog. White people treat dogs like children or members of the family. Black people's dogs are more for protection, a poor man's alarm system. You buy a dog and you keep it out in the yard. Black people name dogs by their traits. If it has stripes, you call it tiger. If it's vicious, you call it danger. If it has spots, you call it spotty. Given the finite number of traits a dog can have, pretty much everyone's dogs have the same names. People just recycle them. We've never had dogs in Soweto. Then, one day, some lady at my mom's work offered us two puppies. They weren't planned puppies. This woman's Maltese poodle had been impregnated by the bull terrier from next door, a strange mix. My mom said she'd take them both. She brought them home to Eden Park, and I was the happiest kid on earth. My mom named them Foofy and Panther. Foofy? I don't know where her name came from. Panther had a pink nose, so she was Pink Panther, and eventually just Panther. They were two sisters who loved and hated each other. They would look out for each other, but they would also fight all the time, like blood fights, biting, clawing. It was a strange, gruesome relationship. Panther was my mom's dog. Foofy was mine. Foofy was beautiful. Clean lines, happy face. She looked like a perfect bull terrier, only skinnier because of the Maltese mixed in. Panther, who was more half and half, came out weird and scruffy looking. Panther was smart. Foofy was dumb. At least we always thought she was dumb. Whenever we called them, Panther would come right away, but Foofy wouldn't do anything. Panther would run back and get Foofy, and then they'd both come. It turned out that Foofy was deaf. Years later, Foofy died when a burglar was trying to break into our house. He pushed the gate over and it fell on her back and broke her spine. We took her to the vet and she had to be put down. After examining her, the vet came over and gave us the news. It must have been strange for your family, living with a dog that was deaf, he said. What? You didn't know your dog was deaf? No, we thought it was stupid. That's when we realized that our whole lives, the one dog had been telling the other dog what to do somehow. The smart, hearing one was helping the dumb, deaf one. Foofy was the love of my life. Beautiful, but stupid. I raised her. I potty trained her. She slept in my bed. A dog is a great thing for a kid to have. It's like a bicycle, but with emotions. Foofy could do all sorts of tricks. She could jump super high. I mean, Foofy could jump. I could hold a piece of food out above my head, and she'd leap up and grab it like it was nothing. If YouTube had been around, Foofy would have been a star. Foofy was a little rascal as well. 
During the day, we kept the dogs in the backyard, which was enclosed by a wall at least five feet high. After a while, every day, we'd come home and Foofy would be sitting outside the gate, waiting for us. We were always confused. Was someone opening the gate? What was going on? It never occurred to us that she could actually scale a five-foot wall, but that was exactly what was happening. Every morning, Foofy would wait for us to leave, jump over the wall, and go roaming around the neighborhood. I caught her one day when I was home for school holidays. My mom left for work, and I was in the living room. Foofy didn't know I was there. She thought I was gone because the car was gone. I heard Panther barking in the backyard, looked out, and there was Foofy, scaling the wall. She jumped, scampered up the last couple of feet, and then she was gone. I couldn't believe this was happening. I ran out the front, grabbed my bicycle, and followed her to see where she was going. She went a long way, many streets over, to another part of the neighborhood. Then, she went up to this other house, jumped over their wall, and into their backyard. What in the world was she doing? I went up to the gate and rang the doorbell. This colored kid answered. May I help you, he said. Yeah, my dog's in your yard. What? My dog, she's in your yard. Foofy walked up and stood between us. Foofy, come, I said. Let's go. This kid looked at Foofy and called her by some other name. Spotty, go back inside the house. Whoa, whoa, I said. Spotty? That's Foofy. No, that's my dog, Spotty. No, that's Foofy, my friend. No, this is Spotty. How could this be Spotty? She doesn't even have spots. You don't know what you're talking about. This is Spotty. Foofy. Spotty. Foofy. Of course, since Foofy was deaf, she didn't respond to Spotty or Foofy. She just stood there. I started yelling at the kid. Give me my dog. I don't know who you are, he said, but you better get out of here. Then he went into the house and got his mom and she came out. What do you want, she said. That's my dog. This is our dog. Go away. I started crying. Why are you stealing my dog? I turned to Foofy and begged her. Foofy, why are you doing this to me? Why, Foofy, why? I called to her. I begged her to come. Foofy was deaf to my pleas and everything else. I jumped onto my bike and raced home, tears running down my face. I loved Foofy so much. To see her with another boy, acting like she didn't know me, after I raised her, after all the nights we spent together, I was heartbroken. That evening, Foofy didn't come home. Because the other family thought I was coming to steal their dog, they had decided to lock her inside so she couldn't make it back the way she normally did to wait for us outside the fence. My mom got home from work. I was in tears. I told her Foofy had been kidnapped. We went back to the house. My mom rang the bell and confronted the mom. Look, this is our dog. This lady lied to my mom's face. This is not your dog. We bought this dog. You didn't buy the dog. It's our dog. They went back and forth. This woman wasn't budging. So we went home to get evidence. Pictures of us with the dogs. Certificates from the vet. I was crying the whole time, and my mom was losing her patience with me. Stop crying. We'll get the dog. Calm down. We gathered up the documentation and went back to the house. This time, we brought Panther with us as part of the proof. My mom showed the lady of the pictures and the information from the vet. She still wouldn't give us Foofy. My mom threatened to call the police. It turned into a whole thing. Finally, my mom said, Okay, I'll give you a hundred rand. Fine, the lady said. So my mom gave her some money and she brought Foofy out. The other kid, who thought Foofy was spotty, had to watch his mother sell the dog he thought was his. Now he started crying. Spotty! No, mom, you can't sell Spotty! I didn't care. I just wanted Foofy back. Once Foofy saw Panther, she came right away. The dogs left with us and we walked. I sobbed the whole way home, still heartbroken. My mom had no time for whining. Why are you crying? Because Foofy loves another boy. So? Why would that hurt you? 
It didn't cost you anything. Floofy's here. She still loves you. She's still your dog, so get over it. Foofy was my first heartbreak. No one has ever betrayed me more than Foofy. It was a valuable lesson. The hard thing was understanding that Foofy wasn't cheating on me with another boy. She was merely living her life to the fullest. Until I knew that she was going out on her own during the day, her other relationship hadn't affected me at all. Foofy had no malicious intent. I believe that Foofy was my dog, but of course, that wasn't true. Foofy was a dog. I was a boy. We got along well. She happened to live in my house. The experience shaped what I felt about relationships ever since. You do not own the thing that you love.